Hi, welcome to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Thanks for joining the conversation. The Last of Us isn't just a post-apocalyptic story about survival. It's a deep exploration of what it means to be human when the world around us is ending. Whether you've experienced the story through the original video game or the HBO TV adaptation, the themes of empathy, humanity, survival, and hope resonate at every turn. Maybe you like the video game or the TV series or just a fan of the Mimi and Greg show. Join us as we reflect on what it means to live, love, and hope. Spoilers are ahead if you haven't seen the show or played the game, but you also don't need to have done either to enjoy our conversation. For those that don't already know, Greg Rucka is a New York Times best-selling author of hundreds of comics and nearly two dozen novels. He's also the writer for his critically acclaimed and award-winning film, The Old Guard, starring Charlize Theron. I've been enjoying these conversations and hope you have too. If you have, please rate my podcast on your platform of choice and share it with others. If you would like to support with a donation to help keep this podcast going and support the work I do. You can become a patron of the show by visiting my website or patreon.com slash Sifu Mimi Chan. For our comments or suggestions, reach out on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan. Now on with the show. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing, Sifu? <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. Sorry about the time confusion. Don't worry about it. Not a thing. Okay. Genuinely oh. not a thing. <laughs> uh, let but, me switch on the do not disturb things. Yes, agrees. And then, of course, we'll get disturbed anyway. Yeah, well, you know, that's okay. Yeah, that's how it works. We got this. All righty. Sure all the vectors are on here. Right speakers are. <laughs> yeah, we're How's good. it going? It's going, going. Not too bad. I'm trying to prep for departure, so it's a little hectic, but... Where's the next one off? What, where are you off to next? If all goes as planned, I will be going to Africa. Yeah, I know. I know. How long is that trip going to be? Um, It's about two weeks. So it's wow. like short of two weeks, but yeah, about two weeks. Just mainly because it's like two days there, two days back even, but... Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Supposedly next Thursday. So where in Africa? So we will be going to uh, South Africa. So we're going to do Cape Town and uh, one of the safaris over a little bit east. And then we will go to the Victoria Falls kind of um, border country. So we'll do Zambia, Botswana and Zimbabwe. Wow. Yeah. It's really exciting. It's very exciting. I, I always try to balance my excitement with anything can happen in the next week. And so if something goes wrong, then it'll be fine. And that's why I get travel insurance kind of things. So uh -huh. I, I like to be excited at the same time. I like to be prepared. It's it's like my, you know, how I have, I don't like having hope. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was, ta was I talking to, I was talking to Troutman yesterday and he made a similar oh, noise there. about not, not having, <laughs> not, not wanting to have hope. And I was like, no, 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 no. We can, we can, we can have a little hope. It's okay. It's all right. Just, just a little bit, a little it's bit. Okay. I don't know. I think I'm going off of our, um, are we, are we, are we, are we live? Say we hello, going? hello. <laughs> hello. Say hello. hello, we're hello. Going. It's so funny. My my team, like you are the only one that I just like will start talking to because I'm like, oh, well, you don't want to catch up with Greg, see how he's doing. But then I was like, uh, everybody seems to like our uh, our random off. Well, what that, would normally that, be off air. Yeah, that, that's because <laughs> that's because it's like you and I just getting together for coffee. We just drop right in. There it so, is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so hello, hello, Mimi. Hello, hello. How are you? So, tell me more. And Eric, Eric is okay. <laughs> yeah. No, he and I were just talking yesterday, um, and he just he, he made some noises about like, yeah, I don't the hope, and it's like you know, I get it, and and Eric, you know, um, Eric thrives on the uh, his 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 sense of humor is. Um, so dark you need an arc light you know like it's 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 he's 
he's got a and has for as long as I have known him, had this very biting tone, sense of humor. But you know, the last several years have uh, have have have, um, have have lowered the expectations uh, so that one needs a. Uh, a, 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 a a crane to dig, you know, those, those, those diggers to get down low enough. So, but it's okay. We can have a little, we can have a little and you need a little. One of my favorite Shakespeare quotes is, and of all things is from Richard the third, but it's, uh, it's, it's doing the wooing and at, when it ends, Richard says, uh, but shall I live in hope? And the response is all men, I hope live. So, mm-hmm. um, and you know, in the Shakespeare, it's 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 a wit, and and you know, and there's there's obvious wordplay, but there's there's I I I have always liked that one. I've always liked that one. That is a good one. That is a good yeah. one. And um, I'll try to remember that. I, I I tend to maybe just more the last several years been not wanting to have hope. And and it's funny because you we're know, talking now and our episode is currently airing of the sigh of relief. And I'm like, I am embracing that, <laughs> the sigh of relief. I, that I am on board with. So I've been quoting that, of uh, course. Did you see the press release for the Harris campaign this morning about like, nope, you know. I, I don't what, see such things, so do share. <laughs> oh, no, it's just that the, the, their press office is is killing it. They're just, just fantastic. Um no, the thing I was going to say, and I think this, I don't think we talked about this last time, though it, I saw it over a week ago. Um, Fraction had posted on Blue Sky talking to one of his kids about um, leaded gasoline mm-hmm. and Y2K. Okay. And the ozone layer. Right? right. And these are all and, and this is really important. I was thinking about this, right? Because Y2K is literally 24 years ago. So if you are 24, it's a non thing. Like if you were born after January 1st, the year 2000, there is no reference for you. And frankly, you could probably go back to being born in 94, 94, you know, yeah, three, agreed. 92. There, there wasn't a lot of awareness for the toddlers exactly. and five-year-olds but it was a real thing it was and it was, it was, a was real thing. and it was catastrophically bad and underreported and it was reported as a really bad catastrophic thing if this isn't taken care of and it, it was underreported the scope and scale of it was never truly presented to the general public and then the millennia came and everything continued just as it had been. And so everybody said, well, I guess it wasn't a big deal after all. Ah. <laughs> um, and in the same way, right, that, oh, you know, it used to be, th- used to be if you got gasoline, you were putting lead into the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And you were getting lead pa- poisoning. And that's just the way it was. That's gone. Right. CFCs used to be an issue. They're not. Like we are capable as as a global society of addressing enormous logistical problems and enormous fundamental structural issues, things that are baked into our everyday, leaded gasoline, um, Every, you know, every freaking computer uh, on December 31st, 1999. Yeah. And there and were plenty I do of have, them. I do have listeners that are like, what, 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 what is this Y2K you speak of? Yeah. Right. And so basically. Should, was should like, we explain? I yeah. think we should explain it. I don't know if I'll do a good job, but I, I, I think it, the whole thing was like, it wasn't going to be able to do the non 1990 blah, 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 yeah, right? They, like the computers the, the, were going to freak out. The quick the version. 1000 or whatever. And, and the <laughs> super, the super, um, the super oversimplified version is that uh, the, the binary language and computers uh, being the, the way all programming had been done and all hardware as well as software was incapable 
or a vast majority were incapable of going from 99 to 2000. Mm -hmm. That in some cases they would default back to 1900. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Instead of saying the year is 2000, they would go the year is 1900. This was going to have an apocalyptic effect on like power outages, every, yeah, everything shut every down, system, transportation, was, like everything that's yeah. wired into a computer would have yeah. been a air like traffic flights, control, yeah. anything having to deal with timing and time. This wasn't simply like, oh, you weren't going to get your bills, <laughs> right? Or property ownership would no longer be a thing, right? None of these happy mutual aid anarchist society solutions. This was quite literally like, no, plans would come plummeting out of the sky. Right, right. Like quite literally, like GPS would cease to function and things mm -hmm. like that. And um, and it was real. I mean, this was a real thing. Yeah. And when it became recognized, it really was like, oh, we have, everybody check your watch and hope it's not digital, right? Uh, we have, you know, 24 months to get this taken care of. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was solved. It was. And so here we are 24 years later, right? And one of the things that social media does in particular, one of the things mainstream media does in particular, um, and, and we've talked about this many a time, right? Because greed, fear, et cetera. Um, we don't talk about successes. We don't, that, That's not a story. Right. The success is not the, the, the if it bleeds, it leads. Well, nobody was bleeding. Right. So. But because of that, we have a generation, a generation and a half who really, when they look at major events. Don't look at Apollo 13 and bringing those astronauts back alive. They don't look at. You know, that what, what they see is 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 uh, 9-11. Yeah, yeah. The the failures are catastrophic and glorious, and and we're sitting on top of an enormous one right now, right? Because the climate is collapsing; it's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but these are solvable problems. They really are solvable problems, and they can be solved. The political wherewithal is there, right? The other one I go to, and this is one nobody ever talks about. You know, 2008, when the Obama administration came in, the, the global economy was on the verge of absolute collapse and not like, and not on a cheerful pat your hand, it's going to be a depression sort of thing, but on a, no, we're talking about mass starvation, uprising riots and fires, like people were buying crates of pork and beans to you know put up in their cabin along with the crates of the ammo that they'd been stockpiling when we avert the problem we forget about the problem because there was no right. problem we didn't see it it didn't it did not impact yeah. our lives um the bad stuff impacts our lives so you know unrelenting uh MAGA hat wearing hate mongering, which has been going on, you know, uh, at megaphone volume for a better part of a decade, if not longer. That's a long time. 10 years is a long damn time. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I remember my youngest was in middle school when um, Hillary Clinton lost the election. Right. And again, I use lost the election in quotes. Right. Um, <laughs> and she's 21 now. Wow. Right. Like that's that's how much time has passed. That's a that that's that's a lifetime for her. Who she was then and who she is now are logical extensions but that's a long trip that's a lot of field to cover yes that's a yes and it is important to like i say we don't we don't publicize the good right this is why i like the movie the martian so much okay right 
you know, the, because it is for all of the other things that the movie is, it's a story of what can be accomplished, mm -hmm. right? What we can do, starting with, starting with, beginning with the very simple premise of we've got astronauts on Mars yeah. and the movie is, and it's not the first time they've gone, right? They're not the first people ever to be on Mars. Um, yeah. It, it, it can't be understated, right? And this is, and this goes to the Waltz move. It goes to, you know, the, these people are weird. Yeah. It, they're, they're weird to not think that we can do these things. Mm -hmm. They're weird to not want to believe in that. It's sort of like, look, I get it if Superman is not your hero. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. But it's weird if you do not see why Superman is cool. Right. You know what I mean? Like sure. if, if you yeah. if, and what if you, Superman stands for he, and exactly. why that's he, he not, may not do it. He may not do yeah. it for you. But yeah. if you cannot on some level go, no, I get it. It's just yes. not for me. Yes. It, it's another issue. So yeah. <laughs> Agree, agree, agree. <laughs> I mean, this is why I log in, you know, for my echo chamber. Well, see, so here's a little, here's a little hope, but, but here's is. a little hope. We can, we can do amazing things. And yes. honestly. And we have, we have done yes, amazing things. It's, like, that's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that there have been wins over the last decade that, like you said, are not celebrated or not put to the you know, forefront of media. And also we don't get to hear about it. Or even if we do, we've moved on. You don't yeah. even get to absorb and enjoy that moment. And I think that's, that's the tough well, part most, where we have to most, kind of just remind ourselves to take a step back. Most people just want to live their life. They just want to be able to get up and do their thing and, 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 you know, go to work and, you know, do their job without grief, be able to, be able to live without interference and without undue hardship. Right. I don't think people, I genuinely don't think people are like, I don't ever want to have challenges. Like we all recognize in life, we're going to be challenged. Things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think anybody's saying I should, I should never have to deal with that. Or I don't think, how should I put it? I don't think most normal people think that. But you know, it's, it's we when it's unrelenting. God, I just let me catch my breath. Damn it! Just give me, <laughs> just give me a couple days of nothing. Yes, agree, agree. Like I just, uh, it's yeah. fatiguing, is why it is. Ex it's, it's exhausting. It's exhaustive. Yeah, and 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 and. I, uh, and, and then we can, we should move and talk about something else, but I, I, I would, uh, Jen was away for like, she got back on Tuesday. She'd been away for over 10 days, right? She'd been dealing with some stuff. Mm -hmm. And the result of that was that, um, you know, when, when your partner is away, you realize how much the division of labor is crucial to like each of you getting shit done. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and I hit a day before she came back where literally it was like text kept every time I sat down to do work, the phone would ring or a text would get And, and I had that moment of like, just, I just wanted it to stop. Just give me, just give me 24 hours of peace. Mm -hmm. Right now take that emotion, which everybody knows. And pump it full of air uh, for eight years of that feeling. You know what I mean? And that's, yeah. we just want it to stop. Yeah. This is one of the reasons why I think that Harris has the energy that she does, right? Because one of the things, regardless of how you felt about Biden, one of the things that it was being done in the narrative was that it was a fait accompli that it wasn't going to be over, that it was in fact going to. And now here comes Kamala Harris and, um, and all of a sudden 
it might be able to be over. Right. Hmm. We might, we, we might be able to get out of this. <laughs> and how exciting is that? Yeah, well, that, that, that's, that's, that's verging <laughs> I mean, on hope there, Greg. <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> you need to have hope. But, well, know, if you don't have I'm hope, trying to why, be better. Oh, if you don't have hope, why go door to door? If you don't mm-hmm. have hope, why put out a lawn sign? If you don't have hope, why vote? You better have hope. <laughs> You know, I mean, the the, the ultimate extension nice. of no hope is self why get out of bed in the morning. Of like not wanting to be disappointed, just like where I'm I don't want to have too trip. much hope. I don't have right. too much hope. Okay, I'll I will buy that. I don't have too much hope. I think I nobody just, nobody says be foolish, maybe. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I know, I know. It's just been yeah, like well, you know, we've been doing this for how long now? It's just been. A lot, right? It, like you were so funny in the in the Discord because, like I said, you are on air this week. Like our episodes playing, and um, fortunately, like the news cycle didn't just move on in you know thirty <laughs> minutes. Like it was still pretty relevant. Like I was like, oh, we were hitting, we, you know, we still yeah. had things to talk about. Whatever we recorded a couple weeks ago, and it still was fine. But like sometimes that's not the case, right? You go, oh gosh, wow, so much has happened. Yeah, we're, so I was really glad we're late. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that yeah. happened to a lot of the talk show hosts went on hiatus or all that stuff happened like right when Biden yeah. announced he wasn't going to run and he removed himself. And that was like so many people were gone. So it was kind of funny. So. um, So, yeah. But so, yeah, it's been it's been good to kind of listen back. And Oscar's always like, oh, you guys just I love listening to, you know, the Mimi and the Mimi and Greg love. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know, it's just nice. <laughs> and we've had some really uh, dark episodes where it's been really tough. And then we've had yeah. some real laughter, uh, fun ones too. I was thinking back and we are, I think we're at like, we're over 60 for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, like, there's we've like got to be in the 60s now. Yeah, because there's some one-off ones like The Old Guard, where it was like that, or, you know, a special yeah, yeah. edition. And, you know, in the beginning, I didn't just do like Greg Rucka 1. I would start to like call it whatever we talked about. Now I realize it's just like, all right, this is just Greg Rucka you number gotta, You got to go back and number them all? <laughs> uh, no, because there's links already out there, right? And so right. if you change it, change the, change name. the hyperlink, then I don't know, something happens in the internets that i don't know about but yeah. i mean we've even survived a podcast don't, name change <laughs> yeah. don't don't anger the internets that's so. right that's right i don't want to be pulled from the air and you know all of that but um for our discord friends uh who do follow and have asked for our our podcast to continue and everything it was kind of fun because you had mentioned you were doing uh a replay and of course i don't oh, yeah, game no, anymore yeah, yeah. you know so but oh man when when i watched the show the last of us i had all these feelings about humanity and it does kind of tie into hope and and where are we at with like just like the, I mean, of the world it's, so uh, I haven't I haven't watched the show and I haven't watched the show. You too. <laughs> um I'm I I'm assuming that it is pretty much a straight adaptation and um exploration of those corners that are not examined in the game. I understand like the Bill episode spends a lot yeah, of so, time about but Bill there's only, and things like yeah, that. But there's only, but, so of course, because I was like, I want to be semi-prepared since I don't do the game. Yeah, I did yeah. that um, like quick, okay, what are the big differences? And there was only like a few that people say are, okay, these are the big things. Otherwise there's so much that I is, assume like, the it game. ends. I assume the season amazing. ends the way the game ends. Um, so yeah, the season ends where he's broken her out, um, you know, spoiler yeah. okay. alert. Okay, that's everybody. that, that's yeah. no, that, that's so all that's you need diff- to, yeah. So and so, but basically, like, he's more human, right? So, he's not like this kind of super hero esque, like, he, he gets hit by a bullet and he goes down. It's not like in a video game where I think he has yeah. a little more resilience. Um, yeah, yeah. that was one of the things listed, and obviously, the Bill episode, and that. I can tell. I mean, you can watch that as a standalone episode. And yeah, I really no, I understand. It's one it's, of the best pieces of television I have ever. Yeah, seen. I, I remember. Was, I remember hearing wonderful things about it. Remarkable. I don't know. I don't know why, but I decided I wanted to replay the first game. Yes. Yes. So and, I would be really curious for you to to watch it as a gamer of it as well. But yeah, I, I talk I, to people who game. And I, I will. It, it's it, it it's 
it's one of those ones where it's like, oh, I will wait until I am willing to pay for that subscription. Uh, oh, that's um, right. That's right. We had that discussion. Of right. All that, I am. That, uh, so I, I am not. I am not inclined to give those individuals money. Yes, right now. Yes. That makes sense. Um, that makes sense. I, I have, remember. I have too many. I have too many subscriptions right now. But yeah, um, heard. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was. It was. It was. It is a. And, and the thing is, that game is ten years old. And this, the game came out in 2014, and the well, lead what time you on replay it. Sorry, I um. So, well, that, that's that. There's there's no straight linear answer. Oh, so so strange. When I have been doing a yeah, hey, listen, smartass. Um, <laughs> When I get really focused on work, I, I don't, um, I don't recreate a lot. And um, I had hit a point where, like, I hadn't touched any of the things that I was doing to sort of decompress for about two weeks. Like, I hadn't, you know, I, aside from, like, watching the occasional YouTube video, mm -hmm. uh, it had just been... I, really busy either with stuff around the house or with work or whatnot. So I wasn't, um, you know, sometimes, uh, I have a PC as you can see here in shot over here. And that's primarily my gaming machine, right? I, I, I will play games on it and I didn't have anything on it. I wanted to play. So that's part of it. So I had sort of hit this thing where I was like, well, what am I going to, you know, what do I want to do? And it's in the front room. And I was like, oh, you know, uh, I need to update the PS5. Like it hadn't been on. We had had a power outage. If you have anybody who has a PS5 knows this problem, you put it in rest mode and then there's a power outage and you turn it back on and you get yelled at for having turned it off wrong. Um, it yells at you. It says oh. next time. And you're like, whoa, that wasn't me. Um <laughs> <laughs> and it's in my library and i was looking and i was like oh that's right i have i have the remastered version on okay i i would be interested to go back and, and examine the game again and i'd play it and i was like maybe i'll play it. i'll play it on new you know on new game plus makes it marginally easier and i powered through it like if you know what you're doing like the first time you play the game it's fairly you you need to play it fairly slowly because haste in that game will get you killed yeah. um, so and then, is this like where you pick who you are or you're only no no you play as always. joel you you're play joel. as joel okay. and not everyone always. else is supporting oh, oh not so always this is, okay this is the stuff that i find fascinating about it because okay um because it goes to the second game and the second game which is i guess going to be season two which they're now filming um, and which, for instance, our dear friend Oz loathes that second game with a white hot passion. Oh, oh okay. Because of how we, it, it, it is even more emotionally effective. Oh, my gosh. And <sighs> um, and I think is one of the best pieces of sort of. Uh, interactive art, like as a statement that I've I, I've ever encountered. And I say that as somebody who obviously hasn't played everything. Right. But I think I think it is a brilliant um the second game is a the second game is a legacy to the first. Like everything that happens in the second game is a direct result of Joel's actions in the first. So when you play the first, you primarily are playing as Joel. There are a couple of moments late in the game where you play as Ellie. Um and And then there's there's a they did a DLC for it that's called Left Behind, um, that is the story of Ellie and Riley and how uh, Riley died and Ellie got infected and so on. Um, spoilers, uh, spoilers for a ten year old game, um, <laughs> but playing through this time, I was very the, the first one playing through this time, I was very very aware of like the storytelling decisions. And there's actually a lot of very subtle story storytelling stuff that I had missed on previous playthroughs, just in the sort of in the motion capture performances uh, and, and so on. 
Um, but, you know, the sequence at the end when Marlena confronts Joel, Marlena's absolutely right. Like, she's right. She's empirically 100% correct. Mm-hmm. And I have had a, a, a very interesting emotional journey with that game because the first time you play it, you're absolutely, I, I was absolutely bought in with Joel. Like, I got where they wanted me to be with him. Mm-hmm. And understood why he is where he is. And only afterwards was like, wait a minute. Like his trauma is such. This, it, 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 it's important. And, and then you run into something else when this goes to it. But his trauma is such that he is he, he's decidedly unwell. He is never going to be well. It's one of the only times I've encountered a, a, a world like that, an apocalyptic zombie apocalypse that literally talks about what that mental and emotional trauma would be, right? What it would be to have survived, to be a survivor. And the cost of that guilt uh, and the burden of it. And... If so, so that's on one side. The other thing the game does very well mm-hmm. is most video games like that, right? You are playing a person with a gun and a knife or whatnot. You are killing monsters. You are killing other people. The game has to have a reason for you to rack up enormous body counts. Just insanely ridiculous body count. Body counts that as zombie games tend to do, right? It's a quantity. It's like like it's all about the horde. You are stacking (laughs) bodies like cordwood, right? And you need to do that in these games because that's the main interaction of the game, right? And it doesn't, and this isn't about The Last of Us. This is any combat game works on the basis of you having lots of enemies to quote unquote kill. Mm -hmm. Okay. But one of the things the last of us and last of us two even more does is um, it doesn't, the, the zombies are one thing when you're killing other people. And there are lots of other people in the first game and in the second game that you end up killing. Um, the game refuses to let you forget that they're actually people, Mm. right? Mm -hmm. And that you are doing this in the backdrop, in a backdrop of a world that has just been devastated by this zombie apocalypse. So it's not like there are a a lot of folks around to begin with. Um, So you take all of that, you take the environment, and 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 if the first game is about sort of Joel's guilt and and trauma, um, the second game is absolutely about cycles of violence and surviving it. Mm. Um, and the result of that, and this is what um oz very found very painful and i don't think oz was alone in this and, and he won't mind me saying this. i mean we've, we've talked about it of course of course um you know you, you play the second one and the first part of the game really you're in ellie's pov then the, what the game does and again you can do this in a video uh, then the game goes, okay, now we're going to go back three days and you're now in this other character's POV for those three days. Mm, okay. Yeah. So you play three days as this other person on the other side. Right. Right. So what the game forces you to do it, it, is it, the game forces you to adopt the POV of the character who has been portrayed as the antagonist in the first third of the game. Mm -hmm. You then flip identities. And the result of that, if you accept it, is you have 
because you, you're empathetic to Ellie. Of course, you have empathy for Ellie. You right. know Ellie. Yeah. Right. You 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 did the first game with Ellie. You know, yes. Ellie's yeah. we love Ellie. Yeah, I was gonna say this seems like a very empathy uh exercise. It video absolutely game. is. And then Ooh. you are in this other person's POV, and there's somebody that from the Ellie POV, which you're in, you have no reason to have any sympathy for at all. I mean, you hate this person. Of course. And then you get into their shoes. And arguably they're a better person than Ellie. Um, and more capable of learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a heartbreaking story. Like these are not feel good games. Yeah. Right? I, and this you is don't, why I, <laughs> and this I, is the I, other thing about them. You don't, you don't walk away from either of these games going. So the dog's going off. I apologize. That's okay. Um, Hi, Marlo. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't walk away from either of them going, well, I feel victory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you do come away from them with the, you know, with, with, with having been moved and having things to think about. That's how I felt watching the show. Right. And it I was really, so different. I really, really like that. And I think yeah. that there is, and I have said for years and years that, um, Computer games as interactive fiction are a profoundly powerful medium that is still being explored, mm -hmm. um, that is still being flexed within, but is capable of, as people have talked about them as interactive movies, they're not interactive movies. Theater and movies are collective experiences. Even, even in this post in, uh, I say post COVID, we're not really post COVID, mm -hmm. even yeah, in our COVID world. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, even that, but in our mm -hmm. COVID world, right. Even if we go, say we go to a movie, it may not be a full theater. It's a collective experience. You yes, go to see a play. To be, it's intended to be it's, a collective experience. Exactly. Absolutely. It is yeah. a shared experience. Yes. Um, a computer game can be played as a spectator thing. We see it all the time with Twitch streamers and so on. Yes. But it's not quite, but it is almost like watching somebody reading a novel, right? <laughs> because it's like, I'm watching your experience, but it's your experience. I'm mm -hmm. separated from it because I'm not I in control of it. I find that whole thing fascinating and I don't understand it at all. Yeah. But that's probably because I don't game anymore. Well, and 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 it's an interesting thing to see. Like there are sometimes it is fun to watch gameplay being done so well. And you're like, okay. oh, that's pretty amazing. But that right. the, I don't. I'm not emotionally invested in that. Right. Yes, yes. What what interact what the interactivity of a computer game does is it is the closest thing to that n novel exchange. Yeah. Right. Um. It is your story. You are controlling it. But like a novel, you're actually not. There's an illusion of control. You get to make some choices, mm -hmm. right? Now, it, it, in a lot of video games, choice is a big deal. Baldur's Gate 3, right, uh, is just like the latest example. The new Dragon Age trailer dropped today um, and, 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 and Trick uh weeks i am very proud to say as a, as a friend of mine and they have devoted an enormous part of their life to this game oh, wow. um your choices your decisions in these games right that, that's always a selling point choices will matter you can influence the game world with your decisions and that's all well that's great i'm not knocking that people that that is that's a crucial part of the interactivity mm -hmm. there is another variation of that which is effectively the last of us variation which is you don't have a choice you think you do the game does a very very elegant job of making you feel mm -hmm. like you have choice but your choices are actually inconsequential your choices are do i kill this clicker with a knife or a bullet to that right you're going to the same place right the destiny but is there there is and in particular in last of us too there is a moment in the game where the game absolutely does not let you proceed. You can't like literally the game stops and you have to press your controller button to do a thing. 
And the thing you have to do is torture somebody. Ah, uh, okay. Right? You have to do it to continue the game. You don't have a choice, right? That is a novel writing moment. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah, your choice at that the point story. is the, it's that, written. And it's the exact yeah. same decision you would have if you were reading the book. I mm -hmm. either keep reading or I set it down. Mm, I am either sneaky. walking away from this or I'm writing out the rest of this story. Yeah. But in a way that doesn't occur, except in the most experimental uh, of literature, you are not complicit in my book, right? You read the book. Well, if horrible things happen in this novel, you know, it's that fucker. It's that fucker Rucka's fault, <laughs> yeah. right? He's so dark. Exactly. <laughs> he did this. I can't he believe did he did that. He keeps telling the future through his comics. <laughs> but in this video game, you're complicit. Mm -hmm. Yes, because you're physically you, taking You action. literally press the Pushing button, the button. <laughs> over and over again. And that elicits an emotional response. Now, if you have come to the game going, dude, I have worked a 40 hour week. I want to drink a beer, play a game and kill some zombies. I do not want fields. Mm -hmm. Right. Then you're getting cold cocked. And I totally get it. I <laughs> absolutely get it. It's like, I did not buy this to have these fields. Fair. <laughs> Fair. I get it. Oh, my God. I, I, and, and I'm not mocking that at all. I, you know, in all sincerity, it's you You don't. It, you know, you, you, you it, you're not. Um, I mean, what's the example? Uh, the best example I, like I can think of. I feel like those type of games like, are more for just energy release, and they're not meant to draw you yeah. into a story and em emote such feelings. It's more exactly, just like, and and you kind of want to be not mindless about it, but you just want to play, right? And, and you're and, not trying to be invested in this this narrative and to and, be taken certain ways on and, a ride. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so. It's intense. Think, the, the whole The Last of Us, all the themes in it, and I, it is I didn't know what to expect stuff. when people said, "Oh, it's a video game done into a show." I was like, "Okay, down," you know. But then you started to hear how great it is, and uh, you know, we don't even have a video gaming console or do any of those things anymore. But like, we were just blown away. Yeah, and like you said, the emotions you feel throughout going through all of this with these characters and the ups and downs. I mean, it's really good writing. Like, you're just like, wow, yeah. this is really well done. No, it's, and, then it, it's the it, and, and Druckerman is credited as the sole writer um, on, on the first game. I haven't gone back to look at, at the writing credits on the second. Okay. Um, and I'm always a little suspicious when I see projects that large and Ooh, like, like one, one writer, yeah, it's like, yeah. it's possible, but yes, I, I, yes. I'm, I'm sure there were other voices in there. Like, it, and that's not to yeah. diminish anything that, that, of course, that's it's phenomenal. It's, no, but it, it absolutely is phenomenal. And, and, and it's, and it's an accomplishment. Um, and, you know, I say this as a guy who's got his name on, and in particular, on, on the works that are more and more collaborative have more and more people involved. But if you see like screenplay by and there's one name, the odds are that's not true. Yes. Yeah. We talked about that one time. You're like, yeah. And also yeah. It depends on what variation got put into yeah. the film. Which I, you I, don't there, always even know. There's literally formula and so on that says this is where you get an and. This is how you get a soul credit. This is. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's absurd. Like yeah, I said, sure. I think uh, Heart of Stone, when all was said and done, had eight or nine writers on it. Yes, and if you, you And you look at it, and apparently there are only two, yeah. right? And that's just not, that's patently not true. It's just not true. But, yeah, yeah. Um, but nobody wants a card with nine names, I guess. And also, you know, okay, what constitutes writing on it I, I i had an idea for the scene does that give mm -hmm. me a did, did i i wrote three lines does that yeah. I, I don't know so <laughs> i just um so yeah i don't know not narratively i've just been pondering it and i've been pondering it sort of as a as a narrative accomplishment 
as a, a, a completed work that I think is really, um, like I said, the game is 10 years old. Like this is, this is, I'm not news flashing anybody. No, but, but I find I, it more fascinating to discuss it with you because you've written works not yeah. <laughs> like this to say, but very similar in like how you feel when you're reading something and the characters you're, you're following well, and that you're with and you're invested in. And then it's like, you like this person. Now you don't like this person. And now you like them again. I mean, and you've done that time and time again. You well, know, the, Jonah, uh, you know, like, yeah. I mean, la that's Lazarus, uh, right? Like right, you should Lazarus spend, all the way through. Listen, having, <laughs> having done a complete reread and, you know, I, I was on the phone with Michael for almost 90 minutes today. Uh, th this morning, just to going over like our final issue loadout and, and schedule and so on. Mm. And yeah, I mean, look, you should, Johanna and Jonah are reprehensible. I mean, mm -hmm. they're just wretched at the start. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully at this point, Johanna is far more complex and Jonah absolutely is not who we thought he was, right? Um, I mean, it's like, and I'm sure the, the Last of Us does this for you too, where it's like these characters, just because they are complex and maybe in certain circumstances, they do what we, you know, as audience members think is the right thing or in our moral compass is right. doesn't mean it gets to erase the bad things, it just shows you the other side. And it's kind of like what you're talking about where you have to play the other character. It's like you're kind of forced into, well, let's see it from I, this point as well. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you have to, Joel's, you know, Joel's decision, everything, right? Joel's decision at the end of the first game is absolutely selfish. Yeah. It is yes. absolutely nakedly a selfish, selfish decision mm -hmm. that he should never have had to make. Yeah, there it is. Right? And why he does what he does is absolutely understandable. It's it's enormously human. There is a moment in the game. Uh, I, I don't know if this is in the show. There's a moment in the game where, uh, yeah, I mean, this is all spoilers. <laughs> like, I, That's you okay. Don't know the like game. you said, it's I, 10 years I, old. And, but yeah. I think also, so our listeners know, like, but, obviously, it's a post apocalyptic zombie. Yeah. Well, you know, so when, when he's setting, but when he he's basically is, with this girl that he's protecting. At, at, the very, to, at the very end, he's, he's trying to save Ellie. And mm -hmm. as he is working his way through the hospital, in the game, you find, uh, you know, there are these artifacts, little, uh, and uh, in this section, they're uh, audio, uh, they're digital recorders, so you can oh, play okay. back messages on them. And you end up playing back a uh, message from Marlena, mm. or Marlene, where she talks about, like, how difficult this decision is. She's asking Ellie's mom basically for forgiveness, she is she's fully aware of of of, of what they have ag agreed to do and in it she says um her superiors and we never meet the superiors in in the game so we don't know who this is but apparently she was told to quote kill the smuggler now the fireflies are supposed to be quote unquote the good guys and Marlene's response is, I, I can't do it. I, I just couldn't do it. Like, I, I argued against it, if, if, if only because there's one other person who understands the weight of this choice, and, and that would be Joel. But Marlene not doing that, right? Marlene is guilty of the exact same thing that of Joel putting is him in that position. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she it's the punts. exact same. She, yeah. she punts. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and so for and listeners who have no idea what we're talking about, basically the, the young girl could be like the anecdote. She might have, you can yeah, make the she, vaccine and she's the cure. World, possibly she's the cure. Yeah. And the choice is her or humanity. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> basically, basically to, to create this vaccine, it will kill her. Yeah. But we'll potentially end this zombie apocalypse. 
Right. Now, mind you, you're 20 years into this zombie apocalypse at this time, and it is very clear that things are surviving and starting to come back. That's one of the things that Jackson is meant to represent. Um, but yeah, it, it, I just, I found that very interesting this time. I was like, okay, so basically by Marlene not wanting to do it, right. She forces these situations, you know, Joel never should have woken up in that hospital bed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think in the movie, in the TV series that is either done that way or she's there and says it, or it, it, it that, that feels very familiar. Yeah. I haven't seen it yeah. in a bit, but yeah, it it's, was, it's intense. It is. It's a very intense. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I, I expect I, I am, I'm, I am debating if uh, recreationally uh, I'm going to go into the second one or okay. go back to the first one and just play it again on hard because oh I play gosh. these things on normal. <laughs> um, Real uppers there. <laughs> I'm not. But, but clearly, there you enjoy it. Like the, it's just. Like I am not just fascinated, the story, but like, you know, the game part am, is fun. I'm and genuinely fascinated too. by the execution and um there is and and I really do think it it's much maligned. Um like people don't really understand. And I say this as a soul creator, right? I say this as a guy who writes whatever he writes, and I have collaborators. I have to work with in comics, right? That, that no comic exists if I don't have a collaborator. If I mm -hmm. don't have a, a partner who is a 50-50 partner, mm -hmm. right? And if I'm writing a novel, that's just me. Da, 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 da. And in, even in a movie, right? I'm still, it's da, 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 even if I'm working off of the notes of 80 people right. at any given time, that's not really an exaggeration. And then they'll do whatever the hell they want, right? Like what I've done is not a sacred document. When you write a novel, prose, sacred document, that's yours. Nobody gets to mess with it. You write a comic book script, it's a semi-sacred document, right? It's the shape, here's the issue, your dialogue, you can argue in it. You write a, a, a screenplay as no way, shape, or form a sacred document. It is, at best, an advisory document, <laughs> right? Suggestions. Yeah, these are suggestions. Heavy suggestions. You, you look at um, computer game narratives. You look at something like, you know, Dragon Age Veilguard. Years long project that requires a writing team, right? And it is hard enough for me to plot a novel that will and, and plot a novel to tell a story, the purpose of which is to elicit an emotional response at the end. I am taking you on a journey and the journey has no merit whatsoever if you don't feel things during it and feel something when it's over, right? Doesn't have to be profound. Doesn't have to be something that you carry forward and go like, my life has changed. I wanted you to be entertained. You should be able to yeah. read it and go, ooh, I had thrills and spills and I laughed and I'm happy and that was a great book. I had fun. What's next? That's fine. I've done the job, okay? But- Knowing the challenge is that to do that in a format that requires it is effectively taking movie making scale and like I say, compressing it down to a, a, a novel experience, um, a, 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 a narrative novel writing experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is astronomically difficult. Yeah. Like if you can land that plane, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you can land it so that when it's over, you're sitting there going, oh my God, I'm feeling, I'm emotionally drained mm -hmm. or I am triumphant. What you know what I mean? That's yeah. Well, clearly, ten years later, it still holds up, and yeah. you're doing replays and all of that. And it's funny because, like I said, we haven't gamed in forever. But whenever Oscar and I watch a show, we usually get 
most of the time annoyed with probably like the protagonist or the main character. And there's always like a person there where like, we're rooting for that person though. That's the person we want to survive. <laughs> That's the person we like. They're, they're the yeah. one that, that we feel is the good person in the film or the one that we really like gravitate towards. And I guess just to kind of um, throw out there, even one of like our discord friends is asking like, is there a character in the last of us that you are like, this one is the, like who I gravitate to, or I I would root for, because I guess in the game I was wondering if you get to choose your characters like that. No, it's not that kind of video no, game. It, but are, what isn't. I mean, because I don't know all the characters that well since I've only seen the show once, and I think I will rewatch yeah. it again before season. No, two. No, I I I totally get Joel. I totally get Joel. I adore yeah. Ellie. Ellie's brilliantly realized. Like one of the great things about the 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 first game, yes, is that the characters are well rounded. Like they yeah. are, you understand who they are and where they're from. I yes. th There's a character who's in like two scenes in, in the first game, Maria, and I totally get her. I understand where she's coming from. Um, second game, I am I am an Abby fan all the way. Okay. Um, right. and, uh, and there are people who hate that character. <laughs> uh, and I get it, but I think... It's uh, like that storyline is just fantastic. And again, it's because it does what art should do. Art should make you see the world differently. Mm -hmm. Agreed. It doesn't have to be I, radical. It doesn't need to be, you know, you know, killer cure. But it's just a different way to look at it. Here's a little something that you haven't considered feelings. before. Yeah. Feel yeah, something. And evoke emotion. See something. Definitely. I feel like what I was so shocked about was that it was pitched to me as, oh, you know, it's a video game thing. But then I was like, no, this is just about a relationship and about yeah. like love and life. And like, you know, of course the themes of humanity and survival, but like it was and allowing so yourself to just love to see the two of them in their dynamic. And it, you yeah. know, in, in, and it kind of what, when you say, oh, this is a love story, what comes to mind is that traditional, quote unquote, boy meets girl love story yeah. romance, right? But I was like, oh, it's so different, but it's just yeah. real love. And gosh, yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it. And then um, I am allergic to cordyceps. So <laughs> I'm so watching, to you, I'm <laughs> watching this and I'm like, you see, everybody? This is, I, I was this right. Be distinct from the earth. Like, I think we should do away with it. So, uh, the, and, and it freaked me out a lot. I have to say, yeah. watching it like come to life. And I was, it kind of, it really creeped me out. <laughs> yeah. so. No, I, I, I hear, I hear you. They, they, <laughs> so they did that. a, <laughs> they, they did a very, very good job of, uh, of um, mm. their world building is solid. Yes. 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 Their world, world building, building is solid. Is definitely solid. I mean, and then on a fun side, like, because you said the only choices you do get to make is how you're going to kill with the knife, with the gun, with the yeah. thing. What is your weapon of choice? Yeah. <laughs> how are you going to solve? How, how are you, are you going to solve this, this, this problem of these enemies? Yeah. So these are these the things you get. So when you go in and you play as Joel, like, is there one that you gravitate towards? Oh, this or is, you, this is the, yeah. Or do you is, only get to I, I, this get is what your you question. pick up? Well, it's, it's oh, no, it's only, you, question. You, you only, <laughs> yeah, you only, you only get, get what you pick up. But look, I'm not particularly good at anything. So I, I, um, <laughs> I, I'm but not, when you play, do you I'm like not, imagine not it's really you, or you're just like oh god I'm, no I'm no, this no. character? Because see, no, no. if I were to play, I would be imagining it's me. No, like, no, I would be is, like, uh, this is realistic for me. I can do this or not, and so I would be, you know. Well, it's not a first. Would not be my thing. <laughs> it's not a first person game. Oh, that's right? true. It's, that's it's true. It's a third so person. So, so you see, you see yourself moving. So there's right. never quite that. <laughs> Um, first person illusion. Mm. Um, I, I I tend to be what's the most efficient way to not die. Okay. That that tends to be Fair my enough. thing. Fair enough. Um, I I do like um, there. Were, I mean, this is this is so. I know this was Red's question on on Discord. Yes. Um, look, I, I will say that my my favorite solution to bloaters was uh, throwing nail bombs and then a Molotov. Like just keeping them as far away as possible and being like, oh no, you don't even get to come close to me. From hiding, I am going to bombard you with everything I have at range. Um, 
there you go. I You almost make me want to see what it's like to play a video game again. And back when I video gamed, I mean, I'm talking like a hundred generations of consoles ago. This is like <laughs> Xbox two or the first one. Was, yeah. I'm talking like Halo, COD, like yeah, yeah. way, way back. But like, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, I, I was, I get motion sickness and Oscar would be like, you just got to push past this. You got to push past it. And then we would just like game and game. And then yeah. we, we just like, we got, we would get too caught up. And so we just like quit, you know, yeah, was that like, was enough of we're, that. Like, we're just quitting cold Turkey. We saw how many hours, which are like how many days you've spent uh -huh. on this console. And it kind of freaked us out. So we were like, all right, all right. We didn't go stretch or train or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you read tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow? No. By Gabriel Zevin. No, no. So it is one of those books that leaves you feeling right. But it's basically about, uh, you know, uh, it's a relationship book too, where it's about people um, and it's a team of video game makers, right? So it's like uh -huh. them developing a video game and it's less about that part of it versus like their journey. And uh, it was like one of those that really just kind of made me feel at the end of it, right? And think about it. And uh -huh. uh, I think it recently made one of those like best book of the last hundred years list. I'm or looking something. it up here. Gabriel Zevin. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just curious for those that actually game, right? When they read something like that, where it has so many notes about it and world building and things like that. And uh, it was, it was really good. So that's my, my little two cents of like, it just popped right, into very my good. head. Yeah. I, I would love to talk to you about it if you decide to read it. We haven't book clubbed in a while. <laughs> I will absolutely do that. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy. It. I I hope you enjoy it anyway. But it was it was a really great read, and I I really Oscar and I really really enjoyed that book. And fantastic, um, I, thank I you. I, be, book rec is good. Yeah, I will. I, I'm always a little scared to give you any book recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> it's intimidating, but it was funny because I I always tell Oscar because so my 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 lovely team of humans that do kind of help me with this podcast will always give me these reels to post and you know here's Greg's quotes or what he says and it's like a clip of you and and then they'll give me a okay. clip of me and I go oh, how come every single clip of Greg is so quotable and it makes so much sense and you're so articulate and eloquent. And I, and then Oscar's like, well, Mimi, I mean, you know, I'm like, well, I know he's a writer, but that also doesn't mean he's this, you know, always public speaking. He goes, don't you remember just being at dinner at the Rucka house? And like <laughs> every night is like a, a practice in being able to articulate all your ideas so succinctly. I'm like, oh, you're right. We left that table going, wow, everybody. I mean, it, it was like, it was like just such a, um, I, uh, highly in intellectual conversation at the Rucka house. I mean, you mean it's, it, it really isn't. Like, it, you, oh, it's so is. Everybody, I mean, everybody, everybody was everybody on their best behavior. No, that, that was, that was that best behavior. All. I don't believe that at all. <laughs> it was it was so lovely, but it was so funny because he was like, oh, of course. I mean, they basically are, are everything is is quotable and, and, and like has like substantial like you know, um, backing of like, oh, you know, well, I read this or, you know, you always have like um, such great information and we are able to articulate it. But I was complaining because I'll tell my VAs, no, I don't like that reel of myself. Cut that. <laughs> 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 but all of Greg's are good. <laughs> Just put the Rucker rant on and we're good. <laughs> uh, it wasn't too, it wasn't too much ranting this time. We're good. No, I don't think there was any real ranting actually, you know, unless you want to just Give us one just for the heck of no, it. Or you can save I'm, it. I'm, save it. You'll have plenty to rant about. We're good right there's, now. There's always something. Yeah. Yeah. There's always no. something. There's always there's something. Always something. <laughs> well, lovely as always. And I will definitely so catch when, up with you when I get back. All right. I uh I wish you guys a lovely trip. It sounds yes, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, we're hoping it to sounds see really a lot wonderful. Of animals and nature and uh, you know, which sometimes I'm a little afraid of, but I think we're going to be okay. I'm getting my nah, anti malaria it sounds, medicine. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, it no, sounds it's, terrific. It's, it's always phenomenal. We're so fortunate to be able to to go and explore and see other places in the world where yeah. you know different cultures and experiences. So yeah, I will definitely be reporting back. I'll send you a photo of an elephant or something. <laughs> I, I would, I would, I would like photos, please. Yes, <laughs> oh, absolutely. All right, Alrighty. everybody, Mr. Greg Rucka. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Give Mimi. Give my love to everybody. I will, and you to yours. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. 
Please subscribe and rate my podcast on your platform of choice and leave a review. You can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Sifu Mimi Chan to help keep this podcast going. Follow me and interact on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan on Instagram or Facebook.